2022 was objectively the year of Ukraine. For almost all of last year, the events unfolding in this country were on the front pages of the most popular publications. Most NATO member states, including the United States, have been helping Ukraine in every way possible, both humanitarian and militarily. Recently, Germany and its partners handed over the most advanced Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine, while Joe Biden ordered his military to prepare 31 units of ultra-modern American Abrams M1 tanks for shipment to Ukraine, which will soon be in confrontation with Russian tanks, as the Russians themselves call them super tanks with T-14 guns, where it'll be seen who has the most advanced weapons. But all of these are fairly standard vehicles, in fact, which were used in World War II 80 years ago. Yes, the vehicles of those times were not as advanced in terms of their properties and capabilities, but the concept remained unchanged. A new type of weapon that has never been used in combat is quite another matter, and we're talking about the latest Israeli laser weapon, which the Israelis began to develop against the backdrop of the events in Ukraine to counter their sworn enemy, Iran and Syria, who are constantly terrorizing them. So as we get started, please like this video and help our young channel grow by subscribing. I think many people have heard about Israel's incredible military innovations, and this small West Asian country is not the first and not the last time it surprised us with its inventions. Today, we'll try to tell you easily and interestingly the story of the creation of the main military equipment that Israel is so popular for. How and why did the world-famous Iron Dome and its complementary Iron Beam appear? What other inventions should we expect from this state? Being in a disadvantageous position in which the enemy was outnumbered both in terms of weapons and the size of the army prompted Israel to make impressive innovations, one of which was a laser capable of causing any danger. What are the advantages of the Iron Beam over the Iron Dome? One of the most important is the ease of targeting and use, including against high-speed and highly maneuverable targets at close range. Laser weapons allow you to not calculate guidance, aim, analyze the flight path, and predict the time, because all you need to do is point and shoot. It's this air defense system that gives Israel a huge privilege. It's one thing to aim at a missile flying several hundred kilometers away on a calculated trajectory which has time to shoot down and quite another to shoot down missiles that fly from a distance of several kilometers and reach in a matter of seconds. An important advantage of Israeli air defense is also the lack of recharge time. The laser can work as long as it has a constant source of energy. For comparison, one Iron Dome launcher contains 20 Tamir missiles, which takes several hours to reload, leaving the sky unprotected. But one of the most important advantages is the price of such equipment. Qasa missiles, which the Palestinians have literally bombarded Israel with many times, cost between $300 and $800 per unit, while Tamir missiles from the Iron Dome missile defense system cost around $90,000 per missile. No economy in the world would have enough money to cover such costs, because, for example, in 2014, the number of missiles fired at Israel reached 4,500. Due to the constant threat, Israel needs a laser airspace control system. So Israeli scientists came up with the idea of combat lasers back in the 70s. IAI and Raphael contributed to the development of research on such weapons and the construction of their prototypes, which helped determine the prospects of these ideas. The first developments included the testing of the first gas dynamic laser with a power of about 10 kilowatts, and later the development of a chemical type system as a result of which scientists realized that the development of a usable laser was possible only in the future. The second wave of attempts to develop laser weapons began 20 years after the first wave. The United States and Israel agreed to develop a joint laser project in July 1996, calling it THEL-MTHEL, Mobile Tactical High Energy Laser, or more commonly known in Israel, Nautilus. By working together, they wanted to create a short-range missile defense laser system based on a chemical laser using deuterium fluoride. This chemical's compound's power was set up to 2 megawatts, which would be enough to destroy artillery shells and unguided missiles in flight. At the same time, the laser itself required a variety of additional equipment to ensure its performance and solve its combat missions. From the very inception of the joint idea, great difficulties were encountered and the deadlines for completing various stages were constantly postponed. In 2000 and 2001, during tests, the THEL system was able to successfully destroy 28 unguided missiles 
and five artillery shells moving along predictable ballistic trajectories in flight. But the military did not like the results. The outcome of these tests was really complicated and expensive compared to the final efficiency. The conclusion of the joint work was Israel's withdrawal from the project in 2015 and focus on its own development of the Kippot Barzel Iron Dome missile defense system, which hits targets in the old proven way with interceptor missiles. The last and decisive attempt to recreate the plan took place in 2014 when the Israeli company Rafael presented a new missile defense system called the Karen Barzel Iron Beam. It was proposed to create a mobile system on a car chassis capable of hitting various types of air targets with a laser beam. First of all, the targets of this system were to be missiles, shells, and mines, and it was also expected to have a high potential for targeting unmanned aerial vehicles. Two trucks with containers with laser systems are part of the Karen Barzell complex. The laser system uses a high-power solid-state laser, and to detect targets, it has its own radar station, where the command post is responsible for the interaction of the complex components. The maximum range of the target is set at 7 kilometers, and the iron beam complex must independently search for dangerous objects and then point one or two lasers at them, and depending on the type of target, its destruction requires the transfer of thermal energy within a few seconds. Operation Northern Shield in December 2018 on the border with Lebanon and the threat of precision missiles from Hezbollah accelerated the development of this air defense system. Israel's Department of Arms development, headed by Danny Gold, controls the entire process of developing and testing laser weapons, and the cost of such a program is several billion shekels. Although the program is classified, sources in the defense industry claim that the developers have overcome what was previously considered the main obstacles to such a project. First of all, they managed to create a laser that focuses on the target quickly and accurately, other problems associated with the development of such systems include the huge amount of energy required for them, the threat of environmental pollution, mobility issues, and the inability to shoot down targets in difficult weather conditions. The main obstacles to the project were the fast and accurate focusing of the laser on the target, which the defense industry says has been overcome. But there are plenty of other problems, too. And the project is harmful to the environment because it requires a huge amount of energy, which threatens to pollute the environment. The disadvantage of the laser system is that it does not function well in low visibility conditions, including heavy clouds or other unfavorable weather conditions. For this reason, the ministry also intends to mount the system on an airplane, which would help overcome this limitation by placing the system above the clouds, although this will take several more years. Despite all the nuances, the Israeli Ministry of Defense is now determined to put the iron beam on combat duty at all costs, as there are no better alternatives. The prevailing view is that the capabilities and privileges of the Iron Dome missile defense system have been exhausted, which has intercepted more than 2,000 missiles since it first entered service in 2011. The military predicts that in the event of a serious conflict, 1,500 missiles will be fired at Israel per day. The Iron Dome will obviously not be able to overcome such a threat, and all its missile stocks will be exhausted. In April 2022, Israel successfully completed the first part of the testing of the laser air defense system, during which it shot down drones, missiles, mortar shells, and anti-tank missiles. According to the head of the Defense Ministry's research group, Yaniv Rodem, the tests were conducted at difficult ranges and times. Since the start of development, the laser has turned out to be more powerful than originally planned. The Defense Ministry's Research and Development Department had originally planned to deploy the anti-missile system by 2024, but the military insisted on a faster deployment. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett announced in February that Israel would deploy the system within a year. The system will be the fifth in Israel's multi-layered missile defense system, in addition to the Hetz, Sharvet Zaman, and Iron Dome systems. Israel also reported that two more laser combat systems are being tested along with Iron Beam. The first is designed to be mounted on a truck or armored personnel carrier. It should protect units within a radius of 3 to 4 kilometers from mortar and rocket attacks, as well as from unmanned aerial vehicles. Its field testing will begin in 2022. According to the Ministry of Defense, Israel is one of the first countries in the world to use powerful laser technology to develop a working air defense system and demonstrate interceptions in operational scenarios. It's expected that the Iron Beam missile defense system, based on a fiber optic laser, can target numerous targets at the speed of light and destroy them in 5 seconds at a distance of up to 7 kilometers. 
Israel's once again confirmed its reputation as one of the leading developers of modern weapon systems, a small country has managed to respond to the challenges faced by much larger states with much larger financial systems. So far, only Russia has announced that it has been able to supply laser weapons to its troops. We're talking about the Parisvet system. The United States and China are still in the stage of experimentation. That's all for today. Thank you for your attention. I suggest you also watch our next video, which will tell you more about the American Abrams M1 tanks that will soon be in Ukraine, which we talked about at the beginning of the video. We'll see you next week.